What's up, my brothers and sisters? I am Jay Campbell. And I'm Hunter Williams. And we are back doing another video today on a topic that is near and dear to our hearts, and that is why men who are utilizing or undergoing therapeutic testosterone dosing or therapy require higher levels of circulating estrogen, which is again known as E2 or estradiol. Now, I won't get into a diatribe, but most people out there who are, you know, in this quote unquote 20 year paradigm of understanding therapeutic testosterone have been taught incorrectly. And that is that you need to block estrogen when you're also using therapeutic testosterone and nothing could be further from the truth. You never want to inhibit estrogen or estradiol because as you know, Hunter, estrogen is what confers protection to our biological system functioning, right? So bone mineral density, brain health cardiovascular architecture health, skin health, muscle tissue health. I mean, everything that is beneficial in biological system growth and development comes from healthy circulating levels of estrogen, both in men and in women. There's absolutely no way or no reason ever to block estrogen, especially in men utilizing therapeutic testosterone. Now, one of the biggest problems that most people have, including clinicians who are prescribing testosterone, is that they're looking at the laboratory ranges, you know, created by LabCorp requests that were, again, as Dr. Keith Nichols likes to say, made up, okay, as far as like, what are the qualifying deviations for uh, average estradiol ranges? And I think I'm not looking at one right now, but I think it's somewhere from like 15 to 40. Then doctors try to compress their patients who are using therapeutic testosterone into that narrow range of estrogen, which you and I both know is impossible. And the only way, way they can ultimately do it is by compressing it with a drug, which is an AI aromatase inhibitor. The, we're not talking about those on this call today. We beat that subject to death. But at the end of the day, when a man is undergoing therapeutic testosterone, their estradiol is going to raise naturally, and it's going to go to a level that it is unique and individual to that end user or that patient. So it doesn't matter whether it goes up to 75 or 95 or 155, or even people. So I've seen people go up as high as 200. In the absence of symptoms or side effects with that concomitant rise of estradiol, you don't have to do anything. There is no level of estrogen that is harmful. Now, again, there's all these people who have extrapolated studies. Dr. Rand McLean, who doesn't know what he's talking about in his newest book, when he's talking about estrone and different versions of estradiol, you know, using the beta version and the alpha version and all this stuff, it's all getting into nonsense. It's all based on studies that are extrapolated from like rats and you know, other rodents. But at the end of the day, we don't ever inhibit estradiol for the reasons that it enhances and creates protection in our biological system functioning. And no level is too high, again, in the absence of symptoms and side effects. The problem is that doctors want to, to suppress it. They want to come back at me or Hunter or other people that are intelligent about this stuff and say, yeah, but you're not the doctor. You're not the one that's faced with the state medical licensing boards auditing me if my ranges or my lab ranges are way out of range from my men on therapy testosterone. And you know what? That may or may not be true. But at the end of the day, your job as a clinician or as a doctor is to not harm and to help and to be a healer. And when you're suppressing your men's estrogen levels, especially when they're on therapeutic testosterone to compress or to, to conform to those stupid standard mean deviations in these laboratory ranges, you're harming your patient and you don't have your patient's best interest at heart. And God knows I've rescued literally thousands of men who have had their estrogen or estradiol crushed into the single digits and sometimes even lower because they're on high dose of aromatase inhibitors or even just moderate dose of aromatase inhibitors. So I'll let Hunter finish this, but the bottom line is you should let the level of estrogen fall to whatever level it is. It should never be inhibited. Some men will have a much higher level of estrogen. It's not harmful, even if it's outside of the laboratory range. The healthier you are, based on the studies that are out there means that you have more of a protective effect from vascular illness or disease than anybody else. In fact, I think the minimum level of estradiol in a man for minimum protection is 70, okay, which is, you know, almost double the standard mean laboratory range deviations. Don't ever allow your testosterone optimization therapy to be upheld or controlled by the levels of estrogen on the normal lab ranges. Yeah. I'll just start off with the story and Jay's gotten thousands of these and I myself have gotten, you know, a lot of people that reach out to me. I actually got a guy and he, his, he was on therapeutic testosterone. He sent me an email. His estrogen was 42. And like Jay said, the, the top end of the reference range is 40. And his doctor told him he was going to have to pull back his testosterone dose and he was freaking out and he was worried. So he was like, oh my goodness, my estrogen's too high. What do I do? I've got to take down my testosterone dose. And I said, well, let's pump the brakes. How do you feel? 
And he said, I actually feel amazing. I felt better than I've ever felt in my entire life because I started, you know, the testosterone recently. And I was like, okay, estrogen confers to the level of testosterone. And we look at men on therapeutic testosterone, you're going to put yourself into the upper quartile or even what is super physiological range, which is really just healthy. And your estrogen will confer to that. Now, if we're looking at the mean of the population, the mean of the population now by default is sick. Yeah. And so and men, fat. exactly, sick and fat. And so they're going to have lower levels of testosterone and thus lower levels of estrogen because that estrogen is conferring to a lower level of testosterone. When we push our testosterone to a healthy, optimized level, which is now going to be considered super physiological, which is really <laughs> just where men were yeah, average yeah, at, you know, 40 or 50 years ago, our estrogen is going to be higher because it metabolizes from testosterone and it confers to the level that's healthy in the body relative to your testosterone right. level. And so a man on therapeutic testosterone has higher testosterone, thus higher estrogen. But what a doctor will say is, okay, we raise your testosterone level, the estrogen goes up. Oh, now it's outside of the reference range. Let's suppress that with a very dangerous drug that's going to cause you a lot of pain, harm, and suffering. A women's breast cancer drug, by the Exa way. Yeah, exactly. That's going to cause like cardiac issues, emotional and mood issues, and all those things. So uh, it's very dangerous. As uh, I think Keith Nichols said it best, it's very dangerous to ever inhibit a God-given hormone. Once you start messing with inhibiting God-given hormones, you know, in this case, estrogen, you're going to have a whole host of downstream side effects that you want to avoid at all cost. And so if you're a man, if you're considering testosterone therapy, don't let a doctor tell you that you need to suppress your estrogen. And then if you are on therapeutic testosterone and your doctor tells you, hey, your estrogen is creeping up, it's 50, 60. Like Jay said, cardiac protection for a man is 70, yeah, man. which would be, yeah, double the range but that's going to be the healthiest level to protect your heart and then protect your brain uh, for long-term cognitive function. So don't let your doctor tell you because you're outside of that reference range uh, that your estrogen is too high. Now, if you're getting off into like the 200s and 250s, I think that would maybe say like, okay, let's look at something that's wrong. But as you know, Jay, much of the high estrogen symptoms is actually insulin resistance because men are too fat and they're experiencing what they think is high estrogen, when in reality, it's an inflammatory response right. to being too fat exactly. and they're using therapeutic testosterone when really their body fat's too high. That's 100% accurate, man. We really, I don't really have anything else to say beyond that. I mean, the truth is, let your level of estradiol rise to whatever it goes to. Some guys, when they're on therapeutic testosterone and they're optimized and balanced are in the 50s and 60s. I see other guys literally in the mid 100s, but no level is too high again, in the absence of symptoms and side effects. And again, most importantly, don't work with a physician that is suppressing your estrogen who has absolutely no fucking idea what they're doing, which is 95% probably of doctors that are administering therapeutic testosterone. Work with one that does. And I happen to work with all of those guys. They're all amazing. You can watch a lot of those guys on the Health Optimization Doctors Roundtable on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's on my YouTube channel where you're watching this video. So I highly recommend if you're a man and you're undergoing therapeutic testosterone and you are working with a physician that is blocking your estrogen, you need to fire that physician immediately because your health is in danger. I'm Jay Campbell. I'm Hunter Williams. And we love you guys and we'll see you guys very soon. Peace.